Welcome guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with the Harlem Renaissance. Um, and this is the unit that you guys will be studying here for your activity as well. So to get into it, the learning targets are HE1, describe and analyze the historical development and impact of the arts and literature on the culture of the United States. The two learning objectives that we will hopefully accomplish by the end of this are students, so you guys will be able to analyze how the Harlem Renaissance changed the arts, literature of the United States, as well as describe how the Harlem Renaissance movement impacted our culture and civil rights movement during the early 20th century. So that's what we hope to accomplish by the end of the unit. Um, I'm gonna give you guys some background information about the Harlem Renaissance, and please be aware, um, we're talking about the 1920s and 30s, so some of the poems um, and language that is used throughout most of this is and can be very racist, but that's just how it was at the times. So and I'd rather show you guys um, the actual content itself than shield you guys from that because it's something that we can learn from um, and hopefully grow and be better from in the future. Um, so the Harlem Renaissance movement, um, it developed in New York City um, between 1910 and 1930, um, and it was an African-American cultural movement. Um, in northern Manhattan, this neighborhood was built as a white upper class neighborhood originally. However, um, over development, so over um, building of homes and apartments, um, led to many homes remaining vacant or empty. So African American families quickly moved to the, to the northern cities and filled those vacancies or openings of houses and apartments. Um, from 1910 to 1920, African American families migrated in large numbers from the south. Um, to the north, uh, and this is also known as the Great Migration. Um, and then by 1920, 300,000 African Americans from the south um, went to the north, and Harlem was the most popular place for these families in New York City. Um, so when I, when I say the south, I mean um, such as like Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Florida, um, and they moved up north, and oftentimes, sometimes west, but um, obviously Harlem up north in New York City was the most popular destination for most of these families that were migrating north. Uh, to give you guys an idea, Harlem is at the upper part of Manhattan. So Manhattan is in New York. Um, and it's kind of the upper part near Yankee Stadium today, um, but it's this overall larger part um, up here near the Hudson River, um, as you can see on the map. Um, and then to give you guys a little bit of background about the Great Migration, um, so the Great Migration relocated 6 million African Americans uh, from rural south to the north, midwest, and west from 1960 to 1970. Um, rural south means like um, usually farms and plantations, um, and they moved up north. Um, and the reason for that was they were driven away from their homes in the south due to segregation laws and poor economic opportunity, so poor job opportunity. Um, and many moved to Harlem in the north for industrial work. So a lot of these workers went from working on a farm to working to a factory up north, um, just to get away from the segregation laws and poor economic and job opportunity in the South. This is a map that I really like um, that shows the Great Migration from 1950 to 1970. And as you can see, uh, a lot of them from these southern states down here moved mainly west, or excuse me, north, um, and a few went west, including Denver, Colorado, which is actually very interesting. Um, but Harlem, again, is going to be up here in New York, um, so a lot of them Look for Harlem to be a new uh, new place for them to start their new lives. Um, and then to get into it, we're going to talk about the jazz and swing culture um, during the Harlem Renaissance. So jazz was born out of the African-American experience in America, uh, basically fusing together African and uh, European musical traditions together to make jazz. Um, and jazz, more than any other music, had been uh, intimately linked with legal and social equality for all, particularly for all, but more particularly African Americans. Um, so that's why jazz was so popular amongst the African American community in Harlem. Um, and then jazz, as well, evolved from slave work songs, spirituals, so religious African American folk songs, the blues, uh, brass band music, and ragtime all together. Um, so it kind of evolved from all those different stages to become what we know as jazz um, today. And then listeners all over America um, heard the music of Duke Ellington um, and his orchestra. He was a very famous jazz and swing um, artist during this era. Um, and it was broadcasted live from the Cotton Club, the most famous Harlem ballrooms throughout the 1920s and 1930s. Again, you can kind of see the, the racism and segregation when we were talking about the Cotton Club 
Um, that's not something we would use today, obviously, um, but that is one of those terms that you kind of see throughout history. Um, and that was the actual name of it. Obviously, it's, I don't know if it's still around today, but that was what it was called back in the 1920s and 1930s. Um, but basically, jazz and swing culture was very popular amongst the African American um, community. Uh, as you can see, it came from work songs, spiritual, um, and religious folk songs um, that many of these African Americans grew up listening to. And it kind of fused together that European and African traditions together. So it was very popular during the 1920s and 1930s. Um, and then next, we're going to go on to Langston Hughes. Uh, so he's a famous poet that came um, about during the Harlem Renaissance. He published his first poem in 1921, uh, and he was uh, called for the importance of pursuing art from African-American perspective rather than the European or um, white perspective, which was very popular at the time. Uh, so there's a new perspective, new look. Um, and then one of the famous quotes by him is, um, we younger um, artists who create now intended intend to express our individual dark skinned selves without fear or shame. Uh, so Langston Hughes really was kind of a voice and activist for the African American community um, to uh, kind of broadcast not to be shy, um, to be yourself, being an African American during such a hard time in America, um, and live without fear or shame of who you are, what you create. Um, so he was a very uh, modest and prominent person during the um, Harlem Renaissance, as you can see. We'll look at some of his poems here in the activity a little bit later on, um, but they're very powerful um, and they impact impacted the society in such a large way. Um, next is Jacob Lawrence. Um, so he was an artist during the Harlem Renaissance and he was known for his visually appealing paintings, which we'll see here on the activity in a little bit. Um, and then he used what was around him in Harlem to show the people, uh, visual culture, movement, color, sounds, and spirit of the Harlem community, kind of tied it all together in his paintings. Um, and then he portrayed the everyday struggle of African Americans throughout poverty, crime, and racial tensions while still capturing a vibrant and thriving community. And this is something that was very um, special for the time because he not only did he show the bad side kind of, of the poverty, crime, and racial tensions, but he also was able to tie in the vibrant and thriving community that Harlem um, is kind of known for and they had um, with the jazz and swing culture and pretty much a, a mix of cultures of the African-American and European um, kind of fusing together. Um, so I'm going to pause this video now. I'm going to create another video on how to analyze a poem and how to analyze a painting. So please uh, watch that video and we'll, we'll go ahead and get into that so you guys know what you're doing for your activity. Um, so thank you and uh, I'll see you in the next video.